the CEO of Professional Fighters League, Peter Murray. He's here in South Florida. Peter, tell us about the tech focus of PFL and what that's all about. Hey James, great to be here. Well, first and foremost, the PFL, we are, we are now the number two MMA organization in the world. Uh, what makes PFL unique is that we have a regular season of playoff and a championship, our format. That's the number one differentiator combined with some of the top athletes in the world competing through the regular season, getting through the postseason, and it culminates with a, a, a world title championship event across six weight classes where each winner wins a million dollars. Life-changing money. Millionaire! So, Who right. wants to be a millionaire? Exactly. <laughs> now you take that format and now you overlay technology. There really hasn't been any innovation in this sport in decades. And so for us, our, our, our mission is to reimagine and grow the sport of MMA and obviously scale the PFL around the world. And so we take that format, combine it with a unique presentation where we integrate it with our smart cage technology, we integrate live fighter data, fight analytics, to provide an immersive experience for fans across all platforms. And I'll give you an example of that. So last year, in 2019 season, we were the only uh, organization in the sport to ever measure punch speed on every fighter in every fight. Now, that data provides new tools and benchmarks for athletes, uh, but also provides context for fans when they're watching. And then going forward, it, that new data will now serve as new prop bet opportunities in the betting space. And next year, in our 21 season, uh, we'll be rolling out kick speed, we'll be rolling out heart rate, we'll be rolling out calories burned. So it's really advancing the sport um, and it provides context and storytelling for the fan while they're watching live. What made you all decide to do that? Because it's an interesting dynamic to provide that we see punches thrown, punches landed, statistics like that. But this is going more into the cardio, the heart rate, how a fighter's doing in that regard, health-wise, while he's fighting, as, as, long, as well as some of the analytics, other analytics that you mentioned as well. Sure, I mean, just, I mean they are, these are incredible athletes, uh, and, and what they have to endure in, in a given fight. To provide that type of biometric data is super compelling. Um, we have access to that at the PFL in partnership with our fighters, so uh, we'll be the first ever to roll that out as well. The 2021 plan, there's a lot of new technology going on and there's been a, a lot of focus on creating new content during 2020. What was the decision making process like to, hey, this pandemic really serious, let's not do 2020 season, but Let's also engage our fans and provide content. Sure, I, it was a difficult decision. I mean, the pandemic is it's affecting society, obviously around the world, all businesses, including sports. And for us, we were fortunate in that the pandemic hit um, before the start of our season. So we quickly made a decision. Two factors that we kept in mind in our decision-making process was safety for our fighters and obviously our event staff, but our fighters come from over 20 countries around the world. So those travel logistics uh, created some complexity. And then number two, from a business standpoint, we didn't want to do a truncated season or one-off events. We have success over the last two seasons of executing the season format with a growing audience. Uh, and anything short of that really did not make sense for us. So we click quickly rescheduled the season uh, all of our broadcasters, including ESPN here in the U.S., uh, are on board for our official third season next year. In addition to our international uh, media partners, our, uh, our fighters are already contracted and, and ready to go for next spring. Um, and in the meantime, uh, since the pandemic hit, we, we've been hard at work. We've been working harder than ever. The focus has been on expanding um, content offerings for fans, combined with um, it, it, it focused on enhancing our product for next year. So as it relates to uh, content offerings, uh, we doubled down on content. We launched PFL Studios, which is our division, 
who's committed to telling great stories in the sport of MMA about the PFL, uh, about athletes, about the icons of the sport. Um, we have four original episodic series that have been greenlit by ESPN that will start to roll out later this month and throughout the end of the year. Um, PFL Studios is co-led by George Greenberg. George is uh, executive vice president, uh, producer uh, for all of our live events and long form uh, programming. George has 17 Emmy Awards and he's produced everything from World Series to Daytona 500s to Super Bowls to you name it, even the Westminster Dog Show. So George has such a range of production capabilities and experience uh, and he's quite passionate about MMA. Uh, George led production for Fox Sports for 20 years uh, and he produced all of UFC's events uh, when, when he was at, at Fox and now he's with us telling great stories in a live setting at all of our events and uh, frankly um, breaking new ground not just in MMA but in all of sports and, and how we televise our events and present it to the fan uh, and now long form, story, short, long form storytelling outside of the cage year round. Um, PFL Studio is also co-led by Dan Goshoy, our, our head of digital. And uh, we're also breaking new ground. We have over 3 million fans and growing. Uh, our social channels are up over 100% uh, despite not having live events. Um, so we're programming all of our channels with programmatic combined with organic digital content. And I'm really proud of the team at the PFL. Uh, on the digital side, we recently won the Synopsis Sports Business Awards for Best League um, Activation in Instagram. And not of emerging leagues, not of uh, properties in combat, but of all major leagues. So really speaks to our capability as marketers, as storytellers, and digital and social has a seat at the head of the table at the PFL. The new technology and the PFL Studios. How important then is that when you first started PFL to where it is now and has that game plan changed or that game plan was in place at the time of starting? Oh, it was part of our vision uh, before we launched to present the sport um, in a completely different way. Again, starting with our format combined with new technologies to enhance the experience for fans, uh, drive expanded engagement, and open up new channels of distribution. So that is our focus on technology. How important was it to get a TV partner such as ESPN on board with PFL? Uh, yeah, less than uh, uh, two years in, in operating uh, after our first season, uh, we, we launched the PFL in 2018 and we quickly had a new partnership uh, with ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, um, in, incredible uh, organization obviously, and they uh, have declared uh, they are the destination in combat. Uh, so we play a role um, in uh, supporting ESPN's vision uh, with a premium innovative MMA product uh, that is unique and it's on a different night of the week versus our competition. And here's what we know about this fan. This fan in MMA wants more quality MMA fights. Uh, and I'll put it into perspective. There are roughly 80 major MMA events per year, okay? Uh, including PFL events and others. Uh, let's compare that to basketball. NBA combined with NCAA games. There are over 6,000. So therein lies the opportunity, frankly, for fans and for the PFL. Your fighter acquisitions. If you can, I know it must be an extensive process, but if you can just sort of summarize, when you look at fighter acquisitions, gaining new fighters, that team, one person, two person, three person, however many it is that looks in that area, works in that area. What are you looking for in fighters? How does that process work for the PFL? Sure, uh, we have an exceptional team and that team is led by Ray Seffo. Ray, Ray Seffo is a former six time uh, world champion K1 kickboxer. Uh, Ray trains MMA athletes. 
Um, and he and his team are identifying recruiting top ranked talent from around the world. 50% of our roster is from the United States and 50% outside the U.S. by design. Our roster across six weight classes uh, has athletes from, as I mentioned earlier, from over 20 countries. And what we look for is, is great, exciting fighters who, who have the capability and what it takes to compete against the best on a global stage. And, and many say the, the, the PFL is the toughest league in MMA in the world. Uh, because our format requires those athletes to compete four to five times uh, to become champion over an eight month um, time period. And the, the, the top MMA athletes in the world, in other organizations, are fighting two to three times per year. How do fighters get paid? I won't ask you to go into all the financial, that's PFL's business, I'm not here for that, but I'm just curious, we know the million dollar prize for the fighter, each fighter that wins their division, the championship. Do they also get paid for per win as well? Are they under contract to get paid as well? How does no, that no different than uh, our competition. Uh, fighters get paid um, a show and win, uh, but once the, the, the postseason, uh, should they get in, uh, they have a million dollar incentive on the line. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's just awesome. How have you, what is it like for you? What is it like for PFL CEO Peter Murray when it's championship night, Madison Square Garden, the ball's about to drop <laughs> on New Year's Eve, this is December 31st, and here you are giving these worthy champions their prize and the big check for a million dollars. Just what is that experience like for you? Yeah, the first word that comes to mind, um, incredibly proud. I'm mean, incredibly proud of what the fighters have achieved and, and as you said, what they've earned. And then proud of my team for you know executing another successful season. Uh, so before the ball drops on New Year's Eve, uh, six champions are crowned and six millionaires are made and there's so much drama and so much celebration as part of that night. So we're looking forward to getting after that next season and potentially crowning new champions. And, and I will say South Florida is a hotbed for MMA talent, as you know. And I was uh, gonna to get to that sure. too. What do you think about South Florida MMA? I'll just mention some American top team. Sanford MMA, which used to be Hard Knocks 365. They're, they're doing a lot of great things with the medical health field getting Sanford involved in their uh, Masters MMA in Miami, but there's there's a lot of great talent in Florida and especially South Florida. What are your thoughts of the South Florida MMA community? Yeah, I mean, you first go to American Top Team and founder what Dan Lambert has created and athletes from around the world from all the major organizations are coming through um, to uh, should they have the capability um, and the, the skills to, to train at this level and compete at this level. Um, we have Kayla Harrison, um, our, our women's uh, champion in, in the lightweight division. Kayla's formerly before uh, going pro with the PFL. She's now 7-0. She's our champion in the lightweight division. Um, she's a two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo. A true champion through and through, leaving her mark on this sport. And Kayla now resides here uh, in South Florida, trains at, a, at American Top Team. Uh, we have another two-time PFL champion, Natan Schult. Uh, Natan is our lightweight division champion in 2019, 2018. He's uh, originally from Brazil, uh, but he trains at American Top Team and many other great athletes there. <clears throat> you mentioned Sanford Sports Complex, um, and I, I did a tour of meetings while I was there uh, here this past week. State-of-the-art facility um, for major pro athletes, and then a completely custom and bespoke um, operation um, for um, MMA athletes. Uh, they have champions like Michael Chandler um, developing and training there and, and many others, and I was really impressed, not only with their state-of-the-art training facility, but also the other services that they're providing athletes in the medical field, um, other non-traditional training and services, and it really speaks to how the sport continues to advance. Uh, so uh, we're very supportive of that. Uh, that's where we attract and develop you know, the, the talent for our league. 
and other facilities around the country uh, and around the world. But the more we start developing our athletes with using the state-of-the-art technologies, services, and, um, and campuses like, like these academies, uh, the better we'll be in the sport. I'm just going to pivot a little bit, but only for a brief minute here. When you're at Sanford MMA and that's so innovative, so different, do you think that's the future of combat sports? Absolutely. No different than any other sport. You will start to see next generation training, um, it facilities, um, enhanced services. These are some of the most elite athletes in the world. Um, and so those resources are there now in the sport. More is coming and, and it's only going to create um, better athletes and, and, and stars for this generation. Mr. Peter Murray, how did you get involved in MMA? I've been in sports my entire career. I left Under Armour to take on this challenge to build the PFL. Uh, at Under Armour as the head of global sports marketing and the brand. Prior to that, I had my own company, Insignia uh, Sports Marketing. It was actually a co-venture with the Miami Dolphins owner, Steve Ross. Uh, and prior to that, I spent uh, 13 plus years at the National Football League running a number of businesses. So I, I've been in sports my entire career and what attracted me to MMA is really the athlete's journey. Uh, you know, this athlete is special. Um, uh, they, you're talking about all American athletes from college, Olympians. They're on their journey, creating a mark for themselves in the sport as this sport is growing. And for us, from a business standpoint, we, we see room for more than one leader in the sport. And quickly, in, in, in you know, no short of two years, we're now the number two global MMA uh, property in the world and growing. So uh, we're, we're also going to leave our mark on the sport. Does Peter Murray have an interest in the Miami Dolphins as a fan? And is Steve Ross interested in combat sports at all? <laughs> I, I can't answer that for Steve, but... Uh, uh, well, he, he hasn't been in any PFL shows, right? I know he's a busy right. man. <laughs> he, he, he runs a great organization. He's really an exceptional person and a, and a great leader, and he's a great owner. Um, He's you know, doing for a lot the, for the, the National Dolphins. Football really League. Left Dolphins. Even that stadium yeah. that he did. And the community. Um, yeah. so, but uh, I am a Jet fan, being a New Yorker. Oh, so there right. is an inherent rivalry, and that's there the beauty is. of sport. That is the beauty of sports. And just a couple more of those questions. Did you play sports growing up? I, I, played, I played football, American football and, and baseball. Um, you know, never competed in, uh, in, in combat, but always was a fan. And where did you grow up? I grew up in New York, uh, Bronx, New York, and uh, born and raised, uh, growing my family there Near in, in Manhattan. Stadium? Absolutely, you know, on, on north of uh, Jerome Avenue. Well, we got Don Mattingly coaching here sure, with the Miami Marlins, sure, so that's always sure. a good thing. All right, so a couple more questions. We're at almost the time limit here, so we'll get you going with that. Appreciate the time. Professional Fighters League CEO Peter Murray, Lillian Garcia, ring announcer. Singer, host, she's just a jack of all trades. She really made a mark with World Wrestling Entertainment, did great there. You have her on board. What's it been like having Lillian on board? And for me, I don't know this, so I'll ask you, do you think we'll ever get to see her sing in PFL? Uh, she has at, at some of our events um, um, yeah, to kick them off, but Lillian just brings a tremendous amount of energy and personality and enhances the spectacle of our events with all of her experience in announcing WWE and elsewhere. She brings a different fan base and we're proud of the fact that we're the first ever in MMA to have a, uh, have a female announcer. So not only the first ever to have a women's 155 weight class and equal pay, um, you know, so uh, we, we really uh, are delighted that uh, Lillian's on our team and she brings tremendous value. And Peter, on that line, what are your thoughts of, we see a lot of crossover between, or some, I shouldn't say a lot, some crossover between professional wrestling, WWE and those likes, and MMA, and seeing fighters doing one or both, going back and forth, something like that. You could think of the Brock Lesnar, the Ronda sure. Rousey, and go down the line and all. Were you ever into pro wrestling as a kid, watching, a fan, and just what are your thoughts of the athletes like that? Because even though I know pro wrestling is a scripted entity, they still have to be very athletic to sure. do what they do. And just what are your thoughts of the crossover appeal? I've always been a fan of WWE. Um, 
Uh, those wrestlers are absolutely athletes while it's staged and there's so much storytelling involved. And I think it's great, there's crossover opportunities both for wrestlers as well as professional MMA athletes. Uh, so we're, uh, we're, we're big supporters of it. And would that be something then obviously if the right scenario that you could have someone if they were serious about it possibly be in PFL? Sure, uh, they'd have to have what it takes to compete. Uh, at our level, you know, in PFL, uh, but we're we're always opening to uh, to look for the next great star uh, in the PFL and in MMA. Their social media and their branding is just incredible sure. for their superstars and what they're doing. And now what you all are doing, it's like yeah. wow. The difference is it's scripted versus it is. you know it in is. MMA these athletes um, when when that cage door closes and that bell rings, there's nothing more intense in sport. Um, and so uh, we do have the ability to create stars. Uh, our format really uh, is built for it. Kayla is a prime example of that. And we have champions, uh, major star talent coming from other organizations. A good example of that is Rory McDonald. Rory is a welterweight champion. Uh, he's yet to reach his peak in this sport and he'll compete uh, with the PFL in 2021. Will be his debut. Let you close this out. We're at the minute mark. I wanted to get you. I told you we'd get to. So, Professional Fighters League CEO Peter Murray, I give you the last word. Say whatever you want about PFL, about 2020, 2021. You've addressed a lot of different subjects or about any of your branding or social media or anything else. The floor I give to you. No, we're, look, we're looking forward to continuing to build PFL around the world, including uh, engaging fans here in South Florida. And uh, I look forward to uh, staging future events. Uh, in the state uh, when uh, uh, this pandemic is over. Uh, certainly Florida was on our game plan uh, for routing some of our events. So uh, we'll absolutely um, be back and uh, with uh, our season product um, and uh, look forward to staging events here, uh, right here in South Florida. So thank you very much. I wanted to give you the last word, but you mentioned that. And now that you mentioned that, I have to ask. So in Will you look at South Florida then too as part of that Florida swing of maybe bringing an event, a PFL event down to South Florida? Yeah, absolutely. And is that one of the reasons too why you do make some treks to South Florida just to check things out and see what's going on? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, hey, we're always, we're always looking for talent in, in our travels and um, always looking to uh, create new partnerships. So I have family here. I spent a lot of time here in South Florida and do business here. But I will tell you, it, it's, a, it's a great sport market, it's a great MMA market, and uh, we'll absolutely uh, be staging future events here. Uh, and right now we're focused on uh, next season, which will be a single destination bubble uh, as we're planning for protracted COVID into 2021, and we'll ensure the safety of our fighters. Uh, we'll ensure that uh, we do get the season in, uh, and we had the opportunity to really learn from the NBA and from other leagues what's working, what's not. Uh, learn from, in fact, the UFC on what's working and how we apply that to our plan for next year. So um, that's something that is in place. And when the landscape changes and, and it's safer, uh, we do look forward to staging uh, broader uh, events where fans can, can attend live and, and South Florida is definitely on our routing uh, map. When you say a 2021 bubble, I just want to make sure too, because the season goes for a long time. Right now is the plan in place to have it where the fighters are there for a certain amount of time and then they're able to go yeah, home we, and do their we thing. We haven't announced all the details, but it'll be a single destination in our version of the bubble throughout the regular season, the playoff and the championship. Because they can't be there all year and, in that bubble, and right? It's all about keeping uh, the fighters safe, uh, all the operational staff, staff safe, um, and, uh, and, and the show must go on. So we're looking forward to getting it in in 21. Thank you for the bonus time. I, <laughs> God, I it's great to be here. so much. Big so, fan of the Miami Herald. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the time, sir. Cheers.